Hey anglers, thanks for tuning in. You're watching In Deep on the Delta and today we are resuming the WTF series. And for the viewers out there who are not familiar with In Deep on the Delta, when you see WTF on one of my videos, that's going to focus on locating fish, whether it's offshore fish, tule beds, uh, vegetation, whatever it may be, the WTF is where's the fish and we're going to talk about locating fish. Now this is actually the second video in the series. The first video that I did was becoming a hydrilla gorilla and I'd like to talk a little bit about how this whole uh, WTF system is going to work. I originally thought I'd be able to do one little video when it comes to talking about fishing islands or a little video on fishing points or whatever but it's not going to work that way. So when I do a video it's probably going to be about three parts. Uh, first part will be locating fish the second part of the or the second video we're going to talk about the baits that we're going to use and the riggings and then the third video in that short little series will be all about techniques so our first video for uh, the WTF series I called becoming a hydrilla gorilla and that focused on locating fish and vegetation offshore so that's number one Today we're going to talk about the baits that we're going to use on those offshore honey holes that we found. And the third video that I'm going to do for that first series is going to be called Fishing Between the Buoys. And that's going to be all about the techniques and the philosophies of what we're doing, how we're fishing the baits. So before we get into our, our topic of baits and, and rigging, I want to uh, just go back a little bit and talk about um, the the video the first video becoming a hydrilla gorilla I've had about uh, th three or four weeks to think about it and as I thought about it more and more there were a few things that I, I kind of left out so I want to talk uh, go over what we did in that video then I'm going to add what I forgot to tell you in that video and then we're going to go into the base let's start from the beginning Three weeks ago, Becoming a Hydrilla Gorilla video came out. We talked about going out uh, to the dock, making sure you had a plan, making sure that plan included having some time during the day to go out and actually search for fish, look for new spots. So once we leave the dock, we're going to go out, and in this case, we're looking for offshore honey holes in the vegetation. So we're going to go out to a bank that we uh, maybe previously have caught fish or we've seen fish or a bank that we just want to check out we're going to run parallel out in that 10 to 12 foot zone and and that's the zone where I tend to catch most of my fish during the winter months and it's also where I catch most of my fish during the summer months when I'm fishing offshore when I'm not hugging the bank so we're we're paralleling the bank and we're using using all visual to locate pieces of bottom that um, are not growing the hydrilla. Maybe the soft, uh, the hard bottom that doesn't grow the vegetation. Maybe it's a sandy bottom. Whatever it is, whatever's creating a lane out there. We talked about finding those lanes, marking them with a market, marker buoy, and then going back and fishing them. So that leads us uh, to what we're talking about today: the baits that you're going to fish these these lanes in the vegetation. Before we get into the baits though, I want to talk about a few things that I neglected to tell you. So when you're out searching, I mentioned that we were really focused on finding these lanes and when you're looking down there, you want to be marking every spot that you can find that is different than just having a big patch of uh, vegetation. So if it's a lane, that's great. If it's an old tire that's sitting down on the bottom, fantastic. If you have pillars, a row of pillars, it could be uh, some sunken wood or a tree that's laying on the bottom. Uh, anything down there that is different than, than what the surrounding area is, you want to mark it with one of those marker buoys. So another thing that I may have failed to mention was when you return to these spots, uh, maybe for the next few weeks when you're refishing the spots you're not going to continue to go back and drop the buoys and refine them on that first trip out uh, especially if you catch a few fish on those spots you want to mark it in your GPS and more importantly 
you're going to want, and this may be more important than the GPS, you have to have landmarks on the bank, whether it is a telephone pole or an odd shaped rock or a, um, a wire going across, whatever it may be, you want to have a visual landmark that you can go back on that bank and when you pull the boat up, you're going to be able to say, okay, there's that rock and I know 20 feet out from the bank, it's going to be 9 to 11 feet deep and there is this lane or a soft spot and I'm going to want to fish it. So remember to keep uh, visual landmarks so you can come back and find those spots on the bank every time or it, you can at least get very close to them. Once you have your landmarks you know that you can take that boat and pull it very close to that spot and this is this is another thing that I failed to mention. Boat positioning is key in offshore fishing. So once you have that landmark be really cautious when you come up before you get to your spot you're going to want to stop the big motor, put the trolling motor in, and ease up to that spot. And it is such a key piece of information that you now have knowing that that spot is out there. Now you may not be able to get to the exact spot every time, but pull up way in advance and start fan casting until you hit that soft spot or, or the honey hole that you know. You're going to know where it is within a few feet, hopefully, and you're going to get out there and find that spot. So be very careful to um, uh, pay attention to your boat positioning. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is give yourself time. Four or five trips going back to that bank and fishing those spots. Especially, obviously, if you catch fish, you're going to go back, back, and back, and back. And, and you're going to have those uh, new honey holes in your, in your directory of old honey holes. But give those spots four or five times. If you don't catch any fish after that, then you can, you can take those spots and, and get rid of them. What you're going to find is maybe out of 20 of these places that you originally marked with marker buoys, maybe only one or two of those is going to pay off. Every now and then one of them is just going to be a sweet honey hole and that thing is going to produce fish for you almost every time you go out there and it may be a good spot year after year after year. So just remember, be realistic. Uh, this is not a, a one or two day deal. It's a month by month by month and as you find more and more of these spots and you're able to locate just one or two new spots every now and then, that's going to go into your catalog and you're going to build that up over time. So give yourself some, um, give yourself a little break. If you don't find fish the first time, don't get discouraged. Keep going back and refishing them. Give them four or five shots. Uh, so before we get into the baits, there's one other thing that I'm going to give you a little hint on and it's it's a site that I like to watch and it's called Working Class Zero. And this is a guy and his name is uh, Mike Gilbert. He's a he's a headhunter angler down in Southern California. He's got some really great videos. If you're not watching Working Class video uh, Working Gla Class Zero, check him out a little bit. And the reason I'm ask, asking you to watch Mike's videos is because he really goes through everything that goes through his mind and he's fishing a lot of very small lakes down there so he's really picking apart little areas of the lake and it just gives you an idea as as successful as Mike is and he's caught some huge fish it takes him time and a lot of effort and he has a lot of uh, ups and downs in his fishing and it might help you when you go out there and you're having one of those bad days you can look at a guy like Mike and I suggest you watch his video I think it's called 17 and he documents from start to finish um, catching a 17 pound fish and it was a fish that he knew was in at this dock and he you know he found it just like we're talking about he found where that fish was and he just kept going back and going back and changing um, changing baits and waiting for that right day and he finally lands it and in the video it's it's from uh, from cast to catch so it's a great video working class zero check that out okay. so now we are going to get into the bait selection and I'm also going to talk about the rigging and I've got about oh, six or seven rods out there some of the rigging is going to be very basic some of it is going to be way out there stuff that I'm sure you've never seen before and that's that's what I'm excited to be showing you guys the oddball stuff, the stuff that I'm trying to develop right now that you're going to be helping me develop. 
So, these offshore spots, you can use any number of baits out there. Almost anything that works in the delta will work on these offshore spots. But we're going to be talking primarily about bottom bouncing baits, um, worms and, and uh, creature baits and things like that. The stuff that we use during the winter months. But I'm going to go over some of the things that you can use during the winter and also during the summer. Any small, uh, or it doesn't have to be small, any weedless plastic swim bait. Um, these guys are a real killer out there. Uh, these are the, shoot, what the heck do they call these? Trash fish. And they're very weedless and you can pull them right through these lanes. And remember, when we find the lanes, they're not always going to be just clean lanes where you drag stuff through. You're still going to have to throw some fairly weedless stuff through them. This is a little bait called um, by 13 Bait Company. That's got some real potential out here and caught some fish on that one too. Don't forget your bluegill patterns. Um, obviously, we're going to all be throwing Kitex with underspins. Uh, here's one that a lot of people are, are turning on to, and that's the uh, the uh, dark crawl or the, the what is it? The dark crawl, dark creeper, or whatever the heck it is, mega bass. That's a good one. Uh, spinner baits. Obviously, you're going to throw your LV500s and your rattle traps and things. Those can be ripped through there. Uh, glide baits, uh, suspending glide baits that are suspending down to five to eight feet. Those are great. Uh, big wake baits coming over the top. This is getting more into spring and fall when the fish get, um, or excuse me, uh, spring and summer when the fish get active. They'll come up and hit these things. And during the summer months, you even though it's offshore, if you know where these places are, instead of fan casting in a 90 degree circle uh, or 180 degree circle, you can come out, know where your spot is, and make two or three casts with a big walking bait or uh, a popper. Obviously, a frog can be good out there, even if it's not in, in heavy vegetation, or a buzz bait, especially in the spring. So all of those baits can be used uh, in these offshore lanes or, or marks that we have where we think they're going to be fish magnets. And when you start doing that, remember we're, we're cross-phasing a lot of information that we go over in this so that what, what may work for you in the winter will work for that same area will work in the summer, but it may be with a different bait. So with that, we're going to start talking about our rigs uh, and they are all going to be bottom bouncing rigs, worms, creature baits, things of that nature. And I'm going to divide them into two categories. Heavily weighted things like jigs and, uh, and uh, Tokyo rigs, things like this. And then just uh, unweighted wacky worms and things. Some of them we're going to call penetrating baits. The big jigs and things are going to penetrate through the hydrilla and they're going to fish the base of the hydrilla where the unweighted stuff is going to drop down and hopefully hit on top of the hydrilla and go over the hydrilla. So penetrating baits and we'll call them floating baits. Okay, that was a quick change. So let's talk about the rigging and the first uh, one, two, three five rods that I have set up here are real standard and I'm not going to go over how to rig up a T-rig or, or a Carolina rig or a drop shot. Uh, for those of you who, uh, I know some of you have hit me up and said, hey, I'm new to fishing and I, I'm, not, I'm not understanding the technology uh, or the riggings. Uh, let me know if enough of you guys hit me up, I'll do a basic rigging, but this is not for basic rigging. This is going to be talking about uh, to you guys that have, know how to run a T-rig and things like that. So the first thing we'll talk about is plain and simply a T-rig. And I, I like to use a, an inline sinker. Um, I like to use tungsten out here and I always peg uh, my weights in the summer. In the winter time, I don't peg them to the to the hook. What I do is I give it about six inches or eight inches, and I let this float. The other thing in the, during the winter months, I like to use a heavy tungsten sinker or weight, about a half an ounce. Now the hook you can use a an inline hook, you can use an extra wide gap hook, whatever you like to use. The other thing is, um, whatever worm that you like, put it on here. I really like the cut tail worms. Uh, just tied, uh, tied weedless. I like something with a little tail on it. 
Um, Cinco's work great. And I will also fish uh, cowboys and Yamamoto stuff, creature baits, beavers. It's more the technique. So this is going to be your, num your first technique that you're going to want to have set up. And that is a T-rig. Now the next thing we're going to do, it's basically the Carolina rig. And that's kind of a forgotten rig out here on the Delta. I know a lot of people don't use it, but during the winter time, the Carolina rig is a killer. And the Carolina rig, again, half ounce sinker uh, or weight, no bobber stop. We're gonna have a um, swivel, and then I usually use about two to three feet of, of leader, and then another standard, standard uh, inline or wide gap hook. On here, I've got a Reaction Innovation uh, pocket rocket. That's a good worm to use out here also. Again, use your favorite color and your favorite worm. And why I like this, when I pull this weight through a clump of hydrilla and it pops through, the weight pops through, but the bait is always going to be following behind it. So when I pop it through, I know I'm still fishing because even though the weight is popped through the hydrilla, the worm has about another two feet before it's going to come through that same area. So I pop it through and then I very slowly pull it through until the worm follows it. And this is going to be something that's going to come right through the base of that hydrilla and those fish that are nose down in there, this is going to be a rig that really pays off for you when those fish are tight to the bottom. So now we've got uh, two rigs there, the T-Rig and the Carolina rig, pretty standard. The next Penetra and these are all penetrating. They're going down. We, that's why we're weighting them so heavily. We want them down on the bottom and just pulling through the weeds. You're going to pull up so much vegetation out here, you're going to get sick of it. But that's the way you catch fish. Third setup is simply a jig style. Now this is a, a swivel head jig, and you know Strike King makes these. Everyone makes them. I really like this because it sinks so fast, and I really like throwing a a beaver beaver style bait or a cray style bait on this and uh, what's the one uh, kinky beavers work really well with this and again we're just popping it down there and pulling it through now you can throw a standard jig you can throw um, a standard weighted jig uh, what else can you throw oh some of you may know what this is it's a Tokyo rig that works great out here because again, it's gonna, it's gonna pull your the um, on this rig, your line's gonna be here, and when you throw that out, it's gonna go straight down. And again, you can either use a worm on this or a creature bait, whatever you're using, and it'll go straight down, get down and penetrate into the um, uh, the hydrilla, and work that bottom. Okay, now we've got a standard drop shot another penetrating rig i'll use a heavy weight and i want this thing to go right down on the bottom and i'm just pulling this through uh, the bottom i'm using a standard drop shot uh, hook i like wacky rigging a lot of times maybe not in heavy cover but wacky rigging works really well and there's another thing that i've been doing and i, I got this idea from um I got this idea from some of my readers that have been saying that they have been going out and catching fish on a Ned rig. Well, I'm not Ned rigging out there. I haven't got to that point, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to bust up a worm here. But let's, uh, I'm using the TRD worms on this. And let's just say this is a little TRD worm. I want you guys to try just nose hooking a TRD out there like this on a drop shot. Try it and let me know what you catch. The other thing that is a little bit weird, I've been wacky hooking these things. They w they work wacky too. They don't have a lot of uh, a lot of movement, but they work wacky. One last thing on this little TRD worm, they work exceptionally well when you're using that Carolina rig and. Let's go back to the Carolina rig. That's the uh, uh, that's the one where we have about uh, three feet of leader going back to your inline uh, hook. 
what I like to do is use the 3 inch TRD and let's pretend like let's not pretend let's let's get a this is not a TRD worm but 3 inch TRD we're going to rig that weedless I'm not doing a very good job here and you're gonna you're gonna run this on a Carolina rig now remember these TRD worms float so when you have this thing on the bottom and you're pulling your weight on the bottom and this is following through it's gonna float up through the hydrilla and I'm starting to catch fish on this and again I want you guys to try it and tell me how it works for you and uh, let me know how you you know integrate it into your fishing and, and I that could catch you a few more fish last but not least we are going to talk about maybe the best bait in my opinion in the entire Delta and that's just a wacky rigged um, worm plain and simple five or six inch Cinco uh, this is a Gamma Gitsu hook with the uh, titanium weed keepers and that is an absolute killer one thing uh, that I didn't mention uh, or that I don't have out this is wacky rigged with no weight and that's what your standard wacky rig and this is not a penetrating bait this is going to be one that you can throw out and basically kind of keep it on top of the hydrilla and pull it up and down and let it let it move in there and maybe this is the bait that you want to use when the fish aren't buried in but when they're looking up you can use it that way or you can put a nail weight in it and I use heavy nail weights and I like to drop this straight down and get it through the hydrilla and then this becomes a penetrating bait it's going a little deeper in the hydrilla and you're able to work it through there and there's going to be a specific technique that I talk about fishing uh, these nail weighted or um, Nico rigs in the winter time and they also work in the summer and it's a technique that I don't think a lot of people are doing so make sure you watch the techniques part of this video give me a minute I'm gonna set up the last two rigs and these are the ones that I'm really excited to talk about okay guys this is the part of the video that you've been waiting for and, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about these last two rigs that I've been using and uh, I'm catching fish on them uh, they're not perfected yet but they are working for me and they're gonna work for you I want you guys to try these rigs and again there's a lot of you guys out there that are really good fishermen use your worms your colors your baits the things that you like to use on them but just try the technique and the philosophy behind this technique the first one is not really a new technique but it's something a lot of people just aren't doing out here it's a two worm setup and I run this a whole lot especially during the winter months and a couple of the advantage of using two wor two worms now you can use two worms you got two baits in the water one of them's going to be on the bottom one of them's going to be up a couple of feet you can use two different types of worms two different colors two different um, uh, varieties of worms maybe like a a, a cinco and maybe something like this little paddle tail worm but this is what you're going to use and and again the baits you can put any bait you want on this guy or this guy it's more just the two worm setup and I'll let you know how I'm setting this up right now uh, real simple I'm using a VMC swivel drop shot hook right here and that's my my top top bait and my bottom bait is just going to be an inline um, or a wide gap worm hook the way that I set this up a lot of times if you're using um, fluorocarbon uh, you'll want to use a Palomar knot so I'll take this and the first thing that I tie on is the bottom section I'll tie a Palomar knot and leave about two and a half feet of leader down here then I'll tie the front on and I'll use a Palomar knot that way you can use a Palomar knot on both the front and the back um, and again this is swivel so it's not gonna turn your line up so once you get this on you get your desired leader length and then you just tie your hook on excellent way to fish out there it's pretty simple I'm sure a lot of you guys may have tried it but uh, it's one that if you haven't you really want to try that okay now this is the one that's going to be 
uh, it's going to blow your mind here, maybe. It is a floating worm setup. And I have this just, uh, this indicator or bobber. We're going to call it an indicator, but it's basically a bobber. This can be moved up and down the line uh, to fish anywhere from, like if we had it here, you're only fishing the worm uh, a foot or two below the, the indicator. We can put that up and you could fish up to about six feet deep. And what this rig is, it's two bobber stops uh, on the line. This is called a thingamabob and then just a hook with a worm on it. And I'll, I'll, give, all, I'll give all the description of this stuff. The, the indicator here is actually called a thingamabob. It's a fly fishing indicator. They come in a number of different sizes and like colors. This. So what you need to do is get a, a swivel, a little barrel swivel. You can get a little cheap eagle claw deal and you're going to hold that on, you're going to snap that on there and your line is going to be going through this guy right here. The other thing you may notice is the little tail on these. They don't come with a tail. The tail is just stuff that I make out of, of these monuments. Uh, they use them for, um, some people use them for gardening or they use them to mark pipes and things underground, but you can buy these. They're just a little plastic nub. I don't know what the heck you'd call them. But what I like to do is just stick a needle in this thing, two or three inches of, of your, um, your nub, put it in there, silicone around it so that you don't get water in your indicator. And the reason I like this is because when it's sitting there, and this is going to bob up and down, and your bait's underneath it, when a fish grabs it and they start swimming off with it and they move out, that, that thing is going to lay down. And if that thing is bobbing up and down like this and you're watching it, and then all of a sudden it just kind of goes like this, you better set the hook because that means something down there has got it and it's swimming away with it. So that's why I like to put this, uh, this little tail on it. So the way that we set this up is we clip our line down here, we put one uh, bobber stop on, then we go ahead and thread our, our indicator then we put another bobber stop on, and this is going to be to keep this from moving back and forth, and it does a couple things for you. And then we're just going to uh, hook on the worm. Uh, this I have a weedless wacky on, but you can throw any kind of hook on there that you need to throw on there. Now, I usually keep these two bobber stops about two to four to six inches apart. And the reason that I'm doing that is because when I twitch this bait, I don't want to be twitching the bait more than just an inch or two. So if this bait, if the bait is under like this, let's, let's put it real close. Hopefully you guys can see this. If the bait is hanging under this indicator, when I twitch my rod, it's just going to go up to here, just an inch or two. You're not jerking the bait around. A lot of times I'll keep it about two inches, like I said. and as I'm twitching the rod, I'm just going like this. Look what that does to the worm. It just sits there. This is where this bait comes in handy. We're offshore, you're in 12 feet of water, you've got hydrilla growing up to, let's say, eight feet or six feet. We set this down, just by moving the indicators, down to be running right over the top of the vegetation. So this worm is pulling right through the top and you're constantly doing this to your rod, twitching. And that bait stays right in front of the fish and it, if you have it set right, it will go right along the top of that hydrilla. Here's another thing that uh, you should be thinking about for summertime. When you're fishing those tule banks and you've got a lot of down tules, or you have a dock, or you have a line of hyacinth where it's really thick, I'll take this, and again, let's just say it's hyacinth and you're in three feet of water. We all know that those fish move up and down the edges of that hyacinth, but it's hard to fish a worm there because if you throw it in, it usually comes back to the boat. We usually have a little bit of wind, especially in the, uh, in the spring, 
I'll throw this out and let's say I want to get it down there a foot or two feet. I set the bobber or the indicator. I make my cast and I feed this indicator right into the dock or right up against the hydrilla or excuse me right up against the hyacinth or right up against um, uh, a two, uh, some down tules. So it's sitting right next to there. That worm drops right in their face for the, for the fish that are moving along those, those paths and you can constantly just sit there and twitch it just twitch it and twitch it and all you're doing is you're doing this to that worm you're giving it some action and the worm is not coming back to the boat if it comes back three or four inches you're just going to let it go and it will float right back in and you can work these docks uh, ledges whatever it may be anything that this this indicator can get blown up against it can be absolutely deadly so again guys try this out and and see how it works for you and give it a shot and I think you're gonna catch some fish and all of these things when I'm fishing the winter I uh, winter time I really don't have a lot of top waters and, and things on I have my my jerk baits and my lipless all under deck and I will fish them during the course of the day but when I am fishing the offshore vegetation these are pretty much the one two three four five seven rigs that I have on the deck and what we're going to talk about next uh, week when we come to technique is what rigs we fish and when we fish them and I want you guys to think about are you drifting with the tide are you drifting against the tide into the tide is your nose up in moving up stream or are you drifting downstream think about what the vegetation is doing whether it's hydrilla sawweed uh, a gear density, whatever tide moving out that it's going to fall over tides not moving it's going to go straight up tide goes starts to come in it's going to fall over the other way and that's when it becomes really important to start thinking am i going to use penetrating baits or i'm going to use floating baits that go over the top every day is different and ha the decisions that you make maybe not the worms or the color or the um, the creatures baits that you use they may make a difference but more than likely it's going to be the technique that you use so that's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks and we're going to call it fishing between the buoys and it's going to be all about the techniques so with that i'm going to be signing off i'm going to let you see what my camera looks like actually on the water i was out today on the water but everything that i've done up until now kind of got ruined in the camera so i'm going to sign off with an on the water sign off all right guys that's the second in the series of becoming a hydrilla gorilla videos and remember there's going to be three if you haven't watched the hydrilla gorilla watch that this was the the baits and the rigging the next video which is coming out in a couple weeks will be the techniques that we're going to use and uh, thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I've had a little bit of camera problems today It's just so hot out here that they they keep shutting off I think because of the heat and I'm out in the Sun and uh, so bear with me I'm still learning about this camera stuff, and I'm still learning YouTube But I'm throwing out as much information as I can and I, I want you guys to look at it and Take some of these things that we're talking about and if they don't sound like they're gonna work right for you Then just go ahead and make them your own experiment with things and I, I know you're going to catch fish i know a lot of you guys out there are really good fishermen and you're going to find little things that i'm overlooking the only thing that i ask when you go out and you start catching fish on some of these things hit me up and let me know how you're catching the fish what you're catching on what you're doing uh, that may be different than what i'm doing and then that way i can learn and as i learn i'll pass that information on to the rest of you guys so thank you guys for watching so much couple weeks we're coming out with fishing between the buoys and we'll talk about the techniques that we'll use uh, when we're offshore fishing so again thank you so much for watching uh, I expect you guys to hit me up out here on the water let me know how you're doing and we're going to share some stories about the big fish that we're catching out here in the next few months especially when that water starts hitting about 55 56 58 degrees we're going to slay them out here so thank you so much for keeping with me and I'll see you guys uh uh, in about two weeks. Don't forget to watch the In Deep on the Delta Weekly Report. Almost forgot about that. Take